in my view, the real uh, change, uh, if you remember one year ago on 12 March uh, of last year, there was some kind of a communication uh, um, uh, mismanagement because the, the Ms. Lagarde said, uh, Ms. Lagarde said that uh, the ECB was not in the business of producing uh, spreads. I think in the explanation she gave yesterday, uh, she did exactly the opposite. She said in order to uh, uh, foster um, favorable financing condition, the ECB has to intervene and to reduce spreads uh, by indicating that they're looking at uh, a whole range of indicators, a holistic approach. Clearly, if some spreads go up, uh, that's not good for the uh, for the European economy. It's not good for inflation uh, projection. So uh, she reversed in, in, in the course of one year the whole uh, policy of DCB, clearly uh, uh, showing that the direction is to uh, inject more liquidity in this phase to bring inflation up uh, as a main priority. Could you see the ECB ever going down the more explicit route of introducing yield curve control similar to what the RBA have in place? Is that something that you imagine the ECB could get to if the situation stays like this uh, for, for you know, the foreseeable future? Uh, th there is a, uh, an element of uh, complexity um, in, uh, for the ECB because what, what uh, yield curve are you looking at? Are you looking at the German bond? at an average, uh, you, you don't have a single yield curve as you would have in the case of the US or Japan or, or the UK. So I think the ECB has, um, doesn't have this, uh, uh, this luxury of just looking at one indicator, but it looks at more than one, which provides, I think, more flexibility. But in the end, they clearly indicated that they are looking at this. Uh, so it's not a yield curve control, but certainly it's a yield curve monitoring uh, uh, and, and therefore action based on that monitoring. Um, if I can broaden the conversation out to the Eurozone economy this morning, we've been discussing the rising virus case numbers in several European economies and the slow vaccination rollout. Uh, how are you thinking about the next quarters in the EU and how realistic is it that we do get a strong rebound in the second half of the year, given the way things are going on the vaccination front? Well, we are at a crucial point. Vaccination has uh, has started, but is slow, but is going to to continue, and is probably going to accelerate with the arrival of new vaccines. Uh, at the same time, uh, the pace of contagion is is also increasing because people are are wanting to go out and 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 feel that the end of the uh, of uh, the end of the tunnel is is closed. So there is this uh, contradiction uh, uh, and and divergent trends. But uh, clearly, as the pace of vaccination picks up, then the desire to start uh, over the summer in particular and, 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 the, and the fall to, to get economic activity, services in particular, travel, we've seen that you know, indicators of uh, reservations are going up. So I think it's a, it's a turning, we are at a turning point. Uh, the second quarter will be a turning point and towards the summer we, we will be out of the of the worst in the situation. Now, understandably, given the, the pandemic situation, Mario Draghi has uh, largely been focused on the domestic situation in Italy since taking the helm as prime minister. But I think looking beyond the near-term pandemic challenges, one of the interesting questions here is from an EU perspective, to what extent Mario Draghi could restore some of Italy's leadership at the EU level, uh, leadership which has been dominated in large part over the last several years by France, and Germany. What are your thoughts there? Well, the, you know, the, uh, France and Germany have a long tradition of working together. They also have more stable governments, uh, to be frank. Uh, Italy is a third country, but has had, uh, I don't know how many, 60 governments over the last uh, uh, 70 years. So um, there is an issue of, of stability. And the second issue is the ability to uh, spend and invest uh, European money well. I think the, the big opportunity for, for Mario Draghi and for Italy is to show the rest of Europe that uh, by spending well this uh, recovery fund, uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea to move towards uh, a more integrated European uh, fiscal framework. 
um, that is to, to move to a European budget, so gradually have more integration uh, of Europe. Uh, so creating more trust among countries, uh, showing the effectiveness that this once uh, and for all action like the recovery fund is in fact uh, uh, going to be something that will be for the good of the whole of Europe and not only of individual countries. Mm, well, the response during the pandemic last year was certainly a good example of that with the launch of the European Recovery Fund. Uh, my question to you, though, is do you think that at a national level, national governments have done enough as far as the fiscal response is concerned? We're, we're getting this humongous uh, fiscal response out of the U.S. to the extent that the OEC, OECD estimate that U.S. fiscal stimulus alone will add about one percentage point of growth to the rest of the world you're not really getting the same type of stimulus at a national level in Eurozones. Do you think this was a missed opportunity? We have to be very careful when we compare the US and Europe, uh, in the sense that uh, um, <clears throat> when uh, the, the welfare system in the US is, is very different. When you lose your job, uh, you don't have the kind of unemployment supports and income supports that you would have in Europe. So you have to uh, to go uh, to Congress and vote uh, uh, for discretionary measures to support uh, income, to support people who, who lose their jobs. In Europe, you remain part of the system, you remain supported. So you don't need additional uh, uh, fiscal measures because they are automatic. We call them uh, automatic stabilizers. Now, having said that, there are no doubts that uh, the US has done a, a, an extraordinary uh, 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 package. Uh, that is temporary and that is needed. Um, in Europe, it will take more time because the recovery fund is more about infrastructure. And I hear a lot of criticism in the US that maybe the, the US package is too much focused on short term transfers to people rather than on investments, infrastructure, long term uh, projects. That is more the focus of, of the European uh, initiative.